Greetings, Questa. The Meddlesome Meeples present Tome Talk with Matt and Richard. Welcome to Tome Talk. And today, Matt is going to tell us about a book, which is Magician by Raymond E. Feist. That's right. Now, this is, uh, again, another one of my all-time favourite mm-hmm. books in fantasy. Although... And I think you'll agree as I start talking about this, there is elements of science fiction in this novel as well. Oh, good. So maybe something there for you to look at. <laughs> yeah. So Magician. Now, this originally came out back in 1982, so it's been out for 35 years now. Mm-hmm. It's uh, spawned a big series of other books. There's lots of other books set in this, uh, in this world. And also there was books where it was kind of like from the other... Uh, people's point of view so I'll, I'll come to that as well well in the same time as that one in the same time but right. events from a different perspective mm-hmm. which was interesting um, but essentially this is a, a again a fantasy story that primarily follows a character called Pug mm-hmm. okay now this, it starts off with Pug being an apprentice to a, a magician called Corgan okay right? now their lives are suddenly sort of really disrupted because the kingdom is invaded mm-hmm. but by aliens from another world right. this is what I mean about the sci-fi element coming in alright so you've got a fantasy with aliens yeah that's yeah. a good idea because mm. the world that uh, this is set on for the beginning of the um, the book is called Midkemia mm-hmm. but a rift in space and time opens or a rift in space uh, and that's where the, this series of novels gets its name it's the Rift War Right. So this rift opens, mm-hmm. uh, and these people called the Sarani invade from mm-hmm. a planet called Kelowan. Yeah. So Pug and his friend Thomas are caught up in that war. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thomas is more of a is not a an apprentice magician; he's a is a soldier. So it kind of, it's kind of following their story. Anyway, uh, the way the plot goes, because I don't want to give spoilers away, because if you haven't read this book, it is a really great book to read. The way the story goes, they're caught up in this war, mm-hmm. and Pug becomes noted because he saves Princess Carline, mm-hmm. which is uh, the Duke's daughter. So then he becomes made a, a squire of the king's court. Right. So they're off. He's off then with uh, Thomas and the Duke and others, uh, but they get caught up in a battle, mm-hmm. and Pug gets captured. Okay. Right. And at that point, he's taken to the alien world, Cape Kelowan. Mm-hmm. But while he's there, they use prisoners as slave labor and things like that. But while he's there, he they realise that he's got the potential to be a great magician. So he then becomes uh, trained and becomes um, a magician which is known as one of the great ones. Uh, that's so what magic works on both planets then? Yeah, but it's kind of like a, a little bit different form. They, mm. they would refer to uh, what Pug was learning on Midkemia with Kulgan mm. as like a lower magic right? and then theirs as like a higher magic. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just a really fascinating story uh, to see how Pug grows and develops as a character. And also mm-hmm. Thomas. He goes from being this young boy with dreams of, of, of war to becoming involved with the elves. Mm-hmm. Cause there, there so there's are, elves as well. There are elves and there are dwarves. Mm-hmm. Um, and he finds the armour of an old dragon lord called Ashen Shugar. Right. Uh, so, mm. yeah. So Thomas has a really great story arc as well. But... As I say, this is his his destiny is going to be leading through a rift in space and time. Mm-hmm. You're going to meet a whole host of really interesting characters. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to see adventure on a grand scale as he travels between worlds. Mm-hmm. But also, as I say, it spawned off a series of books called The Rift War. Now, The Rift War, some of those books are better than others. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this one, and ones like Darkness at Saturn and Prince of the Blood were absolutely fantastic right. um, and some of the characters that he introduces throughout the books just become almost iconic in fantasy like Jimmy the Hand yeah I've probably heard of characters that have been based on ones from books yeah. from these books I mean, yeah. yeah and it really is an absolutely epic tale of heroic fantasy mm-hmm. and I think if you haven't read this this is definitely one to, to pick up and try out in America, it was uh, released in two volumes. So this book's Magician. This was once for the UK market. Mm-hmm. In America, uh, it was released as two volumes. The first was Magician Apprentice and then Magician Master. Yeah. Um, 
which I always thought was a bit. I was a bit surprised that they released it in two volumes over there because it's it's an American author, mm-hmm. but only in the one volume for the UK. But it is a complete story, so it is better, and I prefer it as one right. one solid book. But also, there was a comic adaptation of this mm-hmm. by Marvel Comics. Right. So um, obviously, the, it was a story that was good enough that got the attention of of Marvel. Mm. And I just think it's one that's really worth checking out. If you love fantasy at all, and you haven't read this, then this is definitely one to have a look at. And as I say, the progression of some of the characters is excellent. Um, as like I the say, writing style. The right as for the writing style, one of the things that I sometimes find with certain fantasy authors mm-hmm. is they spend absolutely ages depicting or describing a world and painting, or, you know, word pictures. And as the heroes are travelling along, you can have a whole book about the terrain that they go. Uh, sorry, a whole couple of pages about the the terrain that they're passing through. Whereas Lord of the Rings style, yeah. And I find with this, he gives you enough information that you can picture everything in your head, mm. but not at the expense of the storytelling or at the expense of the pace right. of the story. So I really do think that that's very well done. Uh, yeah, because in a book that thick, you don't want the pacing to be bad, do you? No, <laughs> no, it is. It is a. It is a thick book. I mean, there's um, about eight hundred and twenty odd pages, mm. around eight hundred and thirty pages in this book. So it is a big book, yeah. but it doesn't feel like a big book. No, you know, because the story is progressing so fast, and the characters are jumping off the page. You know, uh, and I do yeah. feel as well that if a book is good enough that it can spawn. An entire world, mm-hmm. then obviously the writer's onto something because um, a lot of stories, a lot of worlds are good for two, three books, mm-hmm. but they lack the depth to keep exploring different aspects of that world. Yeah. Whereas yeah. he's managed to do that, and also other writers, as I say, he wrote a series with Jenny Wirtz, mm-hmm. which is another well-known fantasy author. Yeah. And they wrote a trilogy about the Empire, so. It was like the time, same time period as this book, mm-hmm. and actually some of the events in this book appeared in I think it was the second book of the Empire series. Yeah, but that was all focused on uh, a lady called Mara, mm-hmm. who's who ascended to you know rule her family house because it's it's quite a feudal system that the Kelowans have both in this and in the other stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, very much when you read it, kind of taken from like an Oriental Japanese uh, feudal system. Mm. Uh, and that was again that was quite an interesting choice that fit their society um, their views on honour behaviour and warfare very well Uh, but she becomes the leader of a house Mm -hmm. and so you've got the same events going through this is that one called Flogging a Dead Horse? uh, (laughs) actually no it's absolutely (laughs) brilliant it's very very widely critically acclaimed actually Heather's read the first couple of books in that trilogy Mm -hmm. and she absolutely loved it and she's not even usually into reading fantasy Mm. Uh, but it's it's more from the political point of view uh, yeah it's similar to because in a lot of fantasy it tends to be European medieval Mm. kind of thing and I know in the Final Fantasy uh, genre, well, no, that's completely different. But for a few games, they went with Asian medieval, and it just mm. seemed really, really weird. Um, and it kind of, yeah, weirded a lot of people out. But um, yeah, like you say, it's a, it's a bit of a just different perspective, yeah. isn't it? So, so yeah, if it's got got basically both yeah. in that, then uh, it's got yeah, like the the Western good. feudal system and the and the Oriental as well. But as I say, when you look at the series, the Empire series with Johnny Wirtz. Mm-hmm. It's the same time period, but it's looking at it from, as I say, a very different perspective. Because mm-hmm. you've got a young woman who wasn't expecting to be the ruler of her family, all of a sudden put in that position. Right. Um, the the family has been devastated by the war mm-hmm. that's been fought, uh, and effectively really weakened, and now other people are trying to uh, take over the family's territories and effectively run that her house into the ground. And she's got to fend off all the different threats to the family and the house mm-hmm. um, and it's a fascinating aspect but it's not you know like I say it's the same time period it's not just rehashing that story no, it, no. It, it feels like a completely different book but there are like a couple of events in here mm-hmm. that she was a witness to but it, even that even though you know it's the same it doesn't feel like you're reading the same thing because you've got 
her perspective put across so well. But yeah. again, going back to to this book, um, it is some sometimes interesting to get a book where you've got the young ones and you get to see them growing and developing as a person. Mm-hmm. And by the end of the book, they've you know they're very much a different character to the start like a coming because of, of age the, story. Yeah, in and, a different world. And I enjoy that if it's done well. Mm -hmm. But what I do often find is that with a coming-of-age story, it takes so long to get to the interesting parts. Yeah. Level without a chorus for a while. Yeah. (laughs) Then it's the magician. Yeah. Um, But with this, it doesn't do that. You get into the action fairly quickly. The story progresses very well. It's well written. um, And I can wholeheartedly recommend... This book is one of my absolute favourites, Magician by Raymond D. Feast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think we're going to spend a while getting through our favourites, aren't we, really? Uh, for a while, anyway. Yeah. Well, because um, we both have got quite a lot of old favourites. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've we've both read a lot of books over the years, haven't we? Mm. I mean, this, as I say, this was released just a couple of years before I was born. Yeah. And before you were born. Um, yeah. But, so I've got... I remember a little... bit more than you do because yeah. <laughs> a few weeks before you were born. Those extra 13 days <laughs> make such a difference. Than, yeah. you know. Um, but it was books like this that I read when I was a kid mm-hmm. uh, and that made me love fantasy and fantasy storytelling. Right. Uh, but as I say, it's, it's be- because of that element of a war between the peoples of two worlds, it does have a sci-fi feel to it as well. Yeah, a feel. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> so... As we say, if you haven't had a look, be sure to check that one out. So Matthew thought that was good. What are your thoughts? Let us know. Farewell, Questa. To find out about other productions by the Middlesome Meeples, then check out our channel or rendezvous with us at middlesomemeeples.com. Until next time, Questa, farewell and keep thine axe sharp.